Good evening, dear friends in Christ. It's a pleasure to join you again this day with Mary and to share a reflection on Fatima, the Fatima events and life after Our Lady's apparition. I have decided to caption this evening's talk. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. Anybody who knows the Fatima story knows that line. But while preparing for this talk, my mind went back to that statement of Our Lady. I don't know what you feel about it, but this time, what came to me was fear. And I will explain why. She gives a number of warnings. She says, do the consecration, pray, ask people to change. They may resist. In the last statement, she says, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. As if to say, whichever way they want to go about it, you have two options. You can go by the way of conversion and have a simple life that will be okay for everybody. You can avoid the pain, but you can also decide to go through the pain. But like she did on October the 13th, to prove that she was really the one at work, she says, in the end. And you can feel the weight behind that statement. Whichever way you want to go about it, go. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. My reflection is between that time and now. And sometimes as a priest, I say to myself, just where are we now? Just where are we now? And when you go into the Fatima revelation, I mean the Fatima apparitions, Our Lady's messages, all the things that happened, you can't but say, where are we? And I'll go through a few of them. Actually, the focus of my reflection this evening is the suffering of the Pope, if you remember that. She said the Holy Father will undergo so much pain. Some people say that reflection, that, that pronouncement must have been the shooting of John Paul II in September 1982, September 13th. the shooting in St. Peter's Square. But then there have been so many popes. And in our own time, I just say to myself, look at these few points I'm going to raise. And you can imagine what the pain or the suffering of a pope looks like. And what the suffering that Our Lady talks about could look like. In one year, the pope has had to sign the laicization to laicize an ordained man is to return him to a lay state to sign the laicization of a cardinal. I'm sure Pope Francis wept. Whatever would be the reason why he would laicize a man on the same level with him, a man who he would consult, what do we do about this church? The Pope signs and says he has no right of appeal. He is returned to the lay state and forever. He has had to sign again and again, reduce bishops, remove them from others, ask them to retire. You can't count the number of priests. The Pope is not raised to destroy his house. He is not raised to lay aside ordained priests. When he does that, it's like you force his hand behind his back. And as he does it, you can feel the weight of the pain. Why do we have to get to this point? The Pope's own suffering is one. Francis has a very lovely face. I don't know how he manages his smile. But you need to get a little bit close and see how much pain it takes 
to be a pope in our time. So, between when Our Lady made the statement and the time that we have come to, how has it been? She talks about the errors that will be spread. She talks about signs that people would see. The 1938 sign about the light in the night. A whole lot has happened. The question is, are we closer? Is the world getting closer to following what she requested for? Was it made without a weight behind it? Are we waiting for her to raise a hand? I seen, you know, when you raise your hand, then you're dropping it in anger. Are we waiting to see a hand raise and drop? And in my mind, I say to myself, are you sure she hasn't dropped her hand? Why do I think so? Take your mind to any part of the globe. And I mean absolutely any part of the globe. South, west, any part. And find one place in the universe where people are living in peace. Any place. I just, just stretch your mind a little bit. There's no place. It's either people are being killed for whatever reason, one oppression is going on. People just live in one form of pain or they live in confusion. They live in confusion. It is our world. I am not saying our world in history. Our world now. The statistics are there. If you want to damage your psyche, if you don't want to sleep well, listen to the news. I think it was Pope Francis that somebody, I don't know, one of the interviews, they asked him. And the poor man says he doesn't, listen, he doesn't watch TV. And they were like, how can you be a Pope and you don't watch TV? I'm sure the poor Pope is trying to save his head. So once you expose yourself to the news, what you hear are things that will definitely deny you of sleep. And there seems to be no hope anywhere. When I think about it, I say, how many of us connect what is happening to the lady's request? How many of us think that there is any connection when she talks about if they do not change? If they do not change, she predicted the other war. This war will end, the one, the first world war, but then there will be another one. But the question is if they do not change, have we changed? In our church, so much has happened. So it's not we have the wider world and let us come a little bit home into our sphere. I just mentioned the cardinal that the Pope had to lay aside. He has had problems and problems and problems. Sometimes we want to take the position of why are these priests not behaving well? Don't they suppose send them to prison? Sometimes I say Pope Francis will just look and say in his mind, if I send these men to prison, all of them, where will I get the help from? Who will help him? So I'm sure it is not as if the Pope is afraid of justice. He also has a work to do. But I am not here to make a defense for priests who misbehave. I'm simply saying, if priests misbehave, they don't come from heaven, they come from the society. Then we need to go back again and look. We need to go back again and look. We are in a fix now that the ones there are not doing well. We pray for vocation. We want to send the young people are not encouraged by what they see. Who will want to join a group that will make him end up in prison? So you see our dilemma. A church that is in trouble, obviously. At the end of the day, who takes the first who takes the biggest of the burden? It's still the Pope. I am not saying, I don't have the clear answers. I drop the questions for you so that you can think about it, especially as you have this unusual privilege of meeting with Our Lady, some of us, every weekend. Each time I am asked to do a reflection on Our Lady, I say, you see, 
they called me. I cannot, of my own accord, step forward. But then, I am sharing with you some of the reasons why I think everybody needs to sit back again. We, we live in an age when even God is assessed by his economic value. So when a Christian kneels down to pray, it is, oh God, give me money. Oh God, make me rich. The same wealth that people run away from because it is one of the biggest obstacles you can have in your spiritual life. In fact, for a holy person, when God gives you money, you look for a way to make the money pass out of your hand quickly because the longer it stays in your hand, the bigger a stumbling block it becomes as you struggle to follow and listen to God. But then that is how we judge God now. So when you have prayed for so long and you don't get money, the answer is God does not answer prayers. What does the lady require of us? You know that too well. You watch the clips of her film. I don't know whether you think, as I do, about this uncomfortable situation, the discomfort we feel. It's not out of nowhere. It's not out of nowhere. Do you ever try to put the world inside our lady's apparitions, especially the Fatima one? I keep remembering this. If they do not change, if they do not change, the suffering will continue. So what do you understand suffering to be? If you are not touched personally, how do you feel? Just this morning before I came out, there was a shooting in uh, is it San Diego or where? In Mexico. 13 people shot. 13 women, 12, 13, 12 women and a man. And it happens every day. It happens every day. I have not come to scare you. I haven't come to scare you. But to say, when she sends the warning, it's real. Real. At least, for up to this moment, there's enough evidence to show that the direction we are going is the direction she feared. And when I say, in the end, my, tri my immaculate heart will triumph, the question is, what is the distance between Fatima, 1917, and the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. How much will happen? How many will die? How much tears? Where do I fit in in that range of time? What can I do as a person? Many of us live in fear. It's not necessary. It is not. It is not necessary. They say in a, time of, in, a, in, in a time of injustice, the place for the righteous man to be is in prison. When the world decides to enthrone injustice, the safest place for a righteous man is behind the bars because he won't find peace living with injustice. And so if the Lord calls you, you should be glad. He takes you away from this junk we call life now. But that is for God to decide. And so for as long as we're here, we have to keep struggling. Does she give any solution? Will the world change? I don't see an easy way out. She doesn't promise one. She says, if they change. But what can you do as a person? A whole lot. A whole lot. A whole lot. The attitude of the children. The first thing Lucia asked is, will I go to heaven? That's the first thing that came to the girl, girl's mind. Will I go to heaven? If you keep that frame of mind, you are good to go. Ask yourself, do not be deceived by what you see. There is enough to prove to anybody who wishes to see that this is a passing world. 
the changing of powers, the changing of powers, the Greeks, the Romans, call them. Now you can see the shift. We, we live in a time where somebody can stay in America and threaten to press a button. The other one is in Korea. And two of them are saying, if you talk, I press my button. If you talk, I press my button. That's the kind of world in which we're living. What can we do in our personal lives? In her apparition in July 1917, she offered three things. Three solutions you can apply in your daily life. Don't worry about what happens to the world. She asked the Pope to consecrate Russia. Calls for conversion. Those ones are big things. And you can see that I'm, myself, I'm just a poor priest. You are not the Pope either. No, you are not. But you can pray. She has within her power the hand to push if she is sufficiently asked to push. She has done greater things. But God does not take our responsibilities away from us or else the free will will have no meaning. So we are given a free will, not just to move around, but also to choose between good and evil. And if you make a choice for evil in the presence of good, you pay the price. She says, at our levels as individuals, we can do three things. A continual life of prayer. A life in which in our daily lives we struggle to pray. I say struggle to pray because now when you make the sign of the cross, some people look at you this way. Are you okay? It is easier to pick up your phone and keep pressing it and many of us, in fact, I am one of the victims. Sometimes when I finish pray, pressing, I say, oh my God, I could have used that to say a few Hail Marys. So you, we, do no, we no longer live in a culture that encourages prayers. She says, pray. There's something that prayer does to you. It makes you fearless. When you are in, good, in a good form, you are not... You have nothing, you think that God doesn't have anything against you. At least as far as your mind can tell you. You are not afraid. I tell people that in the good old days, Catholics were told, before you travel, go to confession. I don't know whether we still do it. In fact, you are told, walk into the church, tell the priest, I want to go to communion because I have a journey to make. He is obliged to hear your confession and to give you communion. What is the reason? You may have an accident on the way and die. You are not bothered. But we live in a time now when people have to do vigil and pray that the accident doesn't happen. And they never remember they should prepare themselves. Because you cannot. For all you say and pray, God has what he wishes to do and he will accomplish it. So it is better to put yourself in a good form. The culture of prayer. The culture of prayer. If there's something that is dying and dying fast, it is prayer. It looks old. Especially when you live with a technological, I mean, a mind that has technology as God. The other one, she says, offer sacrifices. And I say Fatima is one of the simplest apparitions. She doesn't say, go and sleep on the floor. Um, don't eat. No. She says, the little difficulties that come to you in your life, take them in your stride. Don't complain. Don't even go looking for extras. Just live your life. Live as quietly. She, there's one title we don't use for her. Our Lady of Silence. The woman whose heart, if the bottom of, ocean is, of the ocean is filled, that of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a collection of oceans. The silence with which she lived, just live in that quietness. Don't think nobody sees you. God sees you. That is the sacrifice she asks for. And what's the third one? 
pray the rosary. This, they are not difficult requests made, are they? Except if you are like me, who cannot pray. This morning, because I have a talk to give, I didn't know what to say. I woke up from my bed and knelt down. I started praying the rosary. And I said, oh lady, if this is a bribe, just take it. So if we can make more effort, if we can make more effort at praying, the whole world may shake, but you will have a stability inside you that you will be shocked you have it. You will be shocked you have it. And at Fatima, that is what she promised the children. When Lucia says, will I go to heaven? Yes. Jacinta? Yes. Francesco, yes. But you have to pray the rosary so many times. But you have to pray the rosary so many times. But you have to pray the rosary so many times. So create a friendship with that beads and touch them. Don't worry if you fall asleep while saying it. Don't worry what happens. Just if you want to call it play, play with it. In that bead, she has done wonders and it still remains the heart of the Fatima message. Pray the rosary and pray so many times. In her message, she will use her hand to push the world in the direction that will bring peace. But until she does that, you who are committed to the rosary will find in your personal lives the peace you seek. And when I say my immaculate heart will triumph, it may mean for us, like it is now, the death of some, the imprisonments of many, a church that is, even as a priest, you walk the street, you almost want to begin to apologize to a priest. Yes, that's how unpopular it has become. And it's even so unfortunate that it is the Catholics who should pray for their priests there are some, some of the people who push to have the priests wiped out are the Catholics. But it's just the kind of world in which we are living. And when Our Lady says, if they do not change, this will continue. If they do not change, there will be so much suffering for the Pope. Let me tell you, if the man is in pain, he can't think well. If he's in pain, how do you want him to coordinate? I just gave you an example. He takes his hand, the same hand with which he creates the cardinals and fixes the ring and signs, this cardinal ceases to be a priest and can never say mass again. I don't know how much pain can be worse than that. And so I come to you, dear friends in Christ, friends of Our Lady of Fatima, what you're doing is excellent. Don't worry about yourself. Just keep at the prayers. Don't worry about those tiny bits. Don't worry if you don't have money. You won't need it. No, you won't need it. You won't need it. And I'm not joking about that. You won't need it. I just told somebody, God does not ask you to do the impossible. Don't imagine that things are changing because you have money. No, don't even think like that. For all your wealth, things can go wrong. How much of time can you see? How much of space can you see? How much of those things do we actually have access to? So let's keep at the prayers. And as we pray, let's continue to pray for the world, for all of us, that those who still call upon God may call upon him with integrity. That those who are priests may be worthy of the offices they hold. That the Holy Father may have a sufficient peace of mind. A sufficient peace of mind to lead the so many millions who look up to him. If you think of the number, you will know how much pain it means when he doesn't have 
the support. To Our Lady of Fatima and Jesus in the Eucharist. May their protection keep us going. And in spite of our weaknesses, may we not be found wanting, at least in our personal lives, through Christ our Lord.